start by saying congrats on the show. I'm five episodes in. Nice. I cannot wait to finish the last five. Cool. Um, What's five, babe? Uh, yeah, fine. What I don't. I don't want to say because I'm going to air this probably okay, before. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just going to. The thing about the show that I will say that is fair game is there's a lot of WTF things. Right. Um. You know. Talk a little bit about when you guys first got approached for the series. How much did you know about where it was all going to go, and how much you sort of like, well, it's night. It's going to be good. The f the the latter immediately. I was. That's how I yeah, thought, yeah. and I came to it, and Lauren was already attached, and I love her work and was like, ah, oh, I want to do this. And I knew who Sean was and I desperately wanted to do it. But every time we came to reread the episode as a cast, I was like, wait, did that happen? Did I miss that totally? And we got all, we got nine episodes to start. So there was tons of time when we do the full cast read. I was like, I missed that completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So always saying WTF. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, Nate's... Uh, being at the helm of this was definitely the, a big draw for me. I wanted to be in a thriller. I've never been in one. And uh, to work with master of the genre seemed like a pretty safe place to be as an actor because this is a really challenging character, which is what I liked about it. It's a strange <laughs> lady <laughs> struggling. Um, well, one of the things that I actually really dig about the show is that it's very, it, what happens is realistic in this situation. Like, it's not, you know, like, it's playing it like, what if this really happened? Right. And it's not, at, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, not introducing. I feel like that's what Knight does. He has the characters at one timbre, playing it real and playing it straight and, and being in their world. And then underneath, there's all of these, like, tectonic plates shifting and all these swirling, crazy supernatural energies that the characters that we as a family aren't even aware of. And I feel like that's his, that's a thing that he does quite magically. And for us, we had to come at it from a point of view of what if this had happened? Where right. are you if this happens to you and your wife? Where are you if this is your brother-in-law? Where are you if suddenly this stranger is in your house, you know? Completely. Um, I had to look away from the screen during the eel scene. Uh, Tell me about it. I, I had uh, to look away while we were shooting it. That was the nastiest day I've ever been on a set. Nell vomited that day. She, she actually puked oh, in a bucket. She she said that to me on camera. It was a lot of work, but again, it was something that was written in the script and everyone was very excited about, and then I went into the kitchens and I was like, hey, we have to skin an eel, and they were like, oh, don't do that. That's impossible work. I was like, what do you mean? They were like, like the real slippery. chefs. The real, the real chefs, chefs were saying, like, you mustn't do that. It's impossible. Don't do that. You've got to nail it to a wooden board. The skin... Underneath the blood is a neurotoxin. neurotoxin. If you get it in your mouth, like, I was Eyeball. like, pardon me? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, dude, tomorrow we'll go get four eels. So we went down to the fishery delivery bay, wherever it is, <laughs> and we go, like, the, the Italian market, we go pick up these eels that someone's called and got from the fish from New York, and they bring them in and we get them, and you have to nail that poor thing to a board and cut it in a V, and then try and get your fingers with rubber gloves on under the skin and whip it that, off. That's Toby's research, but on the set, I will let you know that no eel was harmed. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. No, no, the there was no rubber eels. Yeah, yeah. In the <laughs> filming. No, it really, they, it was unbelievable <laughs> how they switch. had to go through, yeah, crazy switcheroos, rubber eels. Switcheroo. We thing. had real eels in the thing, and we had the guys from mm -hmm. Animal Humane Society, and we had them there, and I picked up the eel, and I'm talking to Lauren, and then... I bring the eel down My and drew, <laughs> drew the chest down there and he caught it into a little bucket and handed me a little rubber eel so I could go boom to stun it, right? Right, absolutely. Stun the eel. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, everyone's been saying Over that. There was so, even right. a, there were dead eels, there were live eels, there yeah. were fake yeah, we eels, a, and yeah. then there was a drill animating a dead yeah. eel. Me, I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. Ultimately, though, I had to look away from the screen and I think a lot of people will experience what I did, yeah. which is. Yeah. Yeah. Or Nell did. Or, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, when you guys think back, besides the eel day, when you think back on the making of the show, <laughs> is there like a day or two that you're always going to remember? Or is that like really the one that just is? It was, f actually I have tons of fond memories and what was nice actually about playing the chef is I got, we had a little satellite kitchen separate from the real, the kitchen on set which worked. And I spent a lot of my time with Drew cooking and figuring out these things. We cooked an actual haggis and it smelt so bad that because we were right by where all the props and it was a huge complaint. So we had to just make a huge sausage in the end. We didn't do yeah. a, an actual haggis. I had some news reports that were really out there and fun to do, but I, I don't want to divulge them because they're sure, funny. Yeah. But they were <laughs> awesome, yeah. 
Um, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, and gross. I'm, I had some like gross. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> one of the things I really like about the way Apple does their shows is that you get a few at once, and then it's weekly. I agree. And yeah. uh, I, I'm because it allows people to have like that public conversation because everyone can I mean, be we in were the just same saying, place. We let, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I wanted to know uh, what, what's your thoughts on this, and maybe what's the last thing you binged. Hmm. I, I, well, I, I love it. I love the idea because you get a little bit of a binge and it helps you get into the show because I started watching the shows that came out first, you know, sure. like, I mean, Snoopy, I watched all of them because they allowed you to have them all. So <laughs> I obviously watched all of them eight minutes long. Um, but the morning show, I was like, oh, I'll watch it. Oh, oh, this is great. Oh, I'll watch the second. Oh, the third. Oh, when's the next one? You know, so it works. I think really well. And it gives you that feeling of like, oh, it's Friday and thing. Oh, I can catch up on my shows. Mm-hmm. I rewatched all of The Sopranos while we were shooting the show. <laughs> okay. There's a binge. You binge watched I binge the watched Sopranos. it. I would go home and That's just watch. It's a really watch. good idea. Yeah. It's a great it's show. So good. It's so good. It's, it's, yeah. What, what, and your thoughts on the whole weekly thing? I like I like the weekly. I like I, I'm, I'm an old fashioned kind of person. I like the old fashioned. Yeah. You know, wait for it, marinate on it, imagine what might happen, talk about it with your friends. Yeah, Look forward, it's an event. Mm-hmm. Make popcorn. Mm-hmm. This kind of thing. Uh, completely. I'll, I'll tell you, as someone who <laughs> runs a website, it's much better for us to have something that people can talk about every week. Right. Yeah, rather yeah. than having and it all Here it all is. Yeah. <laughs> Got to go. Congrats on the show. Pleasure, man. Can't wait to finish it. Thank you very much.